Hey guys, welcome back to a new video in this KMP and Compose multi-platform playlist. In this video, you will learn how you can persistently save local preferences, so any type of specific primitive value. Specifically, what we'll build is this little increment counter, and when we hit save, then it will be incremented and automatically also saved to local preferences. So the moment we then close our app at 12 and then reopen it, you will see that we load it from preferences again and it will be exactly the value we saved before. For that, we will use data store preferences, which is a Kotlin library from Google made for preferences. Little info before we get started, today is the last day where you can get 25% discount on all my courses, including the bundles, including the KMP course, including my Android Essentials course with the discount code SUMMER. Check it down below in this video's description and now let's move on. And all you need to do is to create a new Compose multi-platform project, add this data store version here to your libsversions.toml file and these two dependency references. Again, as usual, you'll find the link and the these dependencies here in the GitHub repository link down below. And it's actually really not difficult. So once you did that, let's minimize this for now, open our product hierarchy, go to compose app, make sure you're on the project view and open our build.gradle file, since here we need to add and reference these just added dependencies. Under common main, you really only need to specify common main dependencies. We want to add implementation libs dot data store dot preferences and actually also implementation with just libs dot data store and these actually shouldn't be implementations but rather api declarations uh, the difference is that with api we also make the included dependencies from data store available to all of our source sets that depend on this common main source set so by adding this with api here we will also be able to have access to these data store dependencies inside of Android main, desktop main, and iOS main. We can then synchronize all of that, wait for Gradle to finish that, and we can jump into our Compose app source, common main source set, Kotlin, since this is our shared code where we want to have our preferences set up. And all in all, what we need here is just a function that creates this data store instance. So the instance we can then use to save and load preferences from local storage. Let's create a new file here. We call this create data store. Will really it just be a file with a plain function? This function will be called create data store and it will get a parameter called produce path. That will be a lambda function which returns a string. So uh, just the, the path that we want to save our preferences file at. So in the end, it's really just a file in our file system where data store will then uh, persistently save the preferences in. Depending on the operating system, we actually run this function on producing this path or deciding what the path should be, of course differs because each operating system just has its own kind of way to manage files on the file system. That's why we want to abstract away uh, that functionality, how, like how we access a specific file from this common main source set here and just provide a lambda that results in a string. Because in the end, a path on every single platform is a string, but coming to that string from a specific file or so is a different thing. So that will be done in this lambda on each platform specifically. And this will now return a data stored instance of type preferences, this one here. And in here, we can just return preference data store factory that comes from the library you included, that create with path, you can see it also has this um, produce path lambda here. Um, I think we can use this overload, but let's specify the name of the lambda with produce file, it's actually called here. And here in this lambda, we can then say produce path and we convert that to a path object, which works here for our Kotlin multi-platform shared source set. What we also want to specify here is an internal const val for the actual file name we want to use across our platforms for this data store specific file. So data store file name and we call this for example prefs dot preferences underscore pb that is the uh, file format that data store actually works with make sure to use this otherwise data store will complain the internal keyword might be new to you um, that really just makes sure that this data store file name can only be accessed within this compose app module and in and of itself we could always make use of this create data store function now on each platform so on desktop and ios in order to create that but as usual when things are about creating files reading files dealing with file system on android then we need access to the context we don't have access to the context here in our common main source set so that already hints towards us needing to make something specific for Android main source set. Let's open that, open the Kotlin module, and in there, we just create another variant of this create data store function. And here we really just make use of normal overloading, where we just create a file, 
we say we call that function create data store which now takes the context reference on android which we need in order to um, refer to a file on the file system also returns data store preferences and in here we can now access the function from our common main source set about producing the path so coming up with the actual file path requires the context that is why we have this overload here in android that requires the context. We could have also done this with expect and actual. So we could have made this function and expect function at actual implementations for every single platform specifically about the way how we create the data store instance. It's really only specific or it's really only different on Android. So we can just keep this in our common main source set and then um, have an Android specific implementation just as a normal overload to the normal common main function. So in here, we now want to call the function from our common main source set create data store. And here in this produce path, um, so this is now a lambda that needs to return some sort of string, we want to now use our context to refer to our files directory. So that is the internal storage of our app. So the kind of isolated sandbox environment where we can save files that are private to our app. We call that resolve um, with our data store file name. So we just um, create or um, resolve that specific file. We now want to get the path off. And then we return the absolute path, which is a string. And then we won't have any more errors here. And now we can take this function and go to all of our entry points. So on Android, the main activity on iOS, it's the main view controller and on desktop, it's the main function and create the data store instance, which you can then use in our shared composed multi-platform UI in order to save and load preferences. First of all, Android main com main activity here for our application composable. Um, let's say we uh, command click into that and say that now needs a data store instance. So prefs, for example, of type data store preferences. And then it will complain here that it needs this instance. We can get rid of the preview and say prefs is equal to create data store. Here we now have access to both, uh, both overloads. On the one hand, uh, the produced path one and the one that takes the context reference. Since we specifically make this one for Android, let's use that one and refer to the application context. Alt enter to import data store or create data store and we also want to put this in a remember block so it's cached across recompositions. Remember, create data store, and now we're good. Let's next jump into desktop main, into our main KD function, which is the entry point for desktop apps. Here we have this application block, which we can cut out in order to allow us executing something before that application block, since here we also need to now pass these preferences with remember again, but here, we could also initialize this here, um, but I prefer the uh, doing this in the main function itself. I always say, okay, prefs is equal to create data store. And here you could now normally resolve a desktop file path, depending on where you would want to save that file. Let's keep it simple for this use case here and just use our data store file name. So then it will store the preferences at exactly the location where your executable desktop file is actually located at. Normally in a real program, you would have some sort of more hidden folder, which the user is not immediately aware of, which the user couldn't accidentally delete or so. And that strongly depends on the platform where this hidden folder actually is. So some kind of system preferences, for example. So for our purpose, let's just keep the path at where our executable is and then add the preferences in here. I think now that we initialized this up here, we don't even need to remember. So we just pass the prefs and this will already be cached across recompositions since we initialized it outside the composition. And lastly, let's jump into iOS main, main view controller, since here we need to do the same. Inside our app composable, we say prefs is remember and we have our create data store function. Actually here, it works a bit differently than on the other platforms. So let's actually make that a separate overload function as well, just like on Android, um, because in here, it wouldn't be a good idea to put this in here. We can also just overload this create data store function for iOS specifically and then always reuse that. So in iOS main, we create a create data store file as well. Let's actually give these specific names because I think Android Studio will complain otherwise if there are multiple such files matching. So let's call this create data store that iOS KT or this in Android create data store that Android KT and in common main, it can stay like that. For iOS main, we can also have this create data store function. Here we don't need anything like uh, on Android, like the context, we can just have this function that returns the data store preferences instance. And we then return the create data store function from our common main source set and producing the path works like this. We first of all need to specify a directory which we can get with ns file manager dot default manager dot urls for directory, they're just uh, singular, URL for directory to just resolve a specific directory. 
and a specific URL, so a specific file path. The directory is NS document directory. So that's uh, comparable to the local storage that we have on Android, where we can just store documents, preferences. You need to give this uh, such a domain mask, which is NS user domain mask. So I think this corresponds to who is able to read these files. And for the rest, we can keep these at null. So this appropriate for URL can be null. Create, well, that's a Boolean, can be false since we don't want to create this directory since this already exists. And lastly, the error can be null. And now we can use this directory to now fully resolve the, the file path here by saying require not null. So we make sure that this directory definitely exists that path. And we then append our data store file name, this one here. So we just resolve the path for our local preferences and then have a new file with the shared file name that we've chosen. Here, we need to opt into this experimental foreign API. So I'll enter, add this to the file here, this annotation, and then the error will be gone. Back in main view controller, we can now make use of that and actually just call this function with normal parentheses, because this is now the overload that we've just specified. All right. Now, lastly, we need to implement our UI that we can on the one hand increment our button and then also automatically save the incremented counter in our preferences and then load that again to display it as a state in our UI. So here in app KT, and that is the entry point for our UI, we now have access to the platform specific preferences variant. And what we can do is we can keep this button, we can keep this column, I guess, give this a modifier here, whoops, a modifier horizontal, alignment like this, but the modifier should be fill max size. So we just fill the whole screen. And I would also like to center everything vertically. So we can say vertical arrangement is arrangement center. We can get rid of this show content state. We can make this button on click empty and rather just give this a name of increment. The animated visibility can be removed. And what we are missing right now is just a text up here. That displays our current counter. Let's hard code this for now. Let's say um, text align should be center. Oops, center, center, text align dot center. And the font size could be something really large, like let's make it 50 SP and I'll enter to import SP. All right. So what's missing now is that we assign the value from our local preferences here to this text and that when we click this button, we also increment the counter first of all and then save that new incremented counter at the specific preferences key. And this could now be any type of specific preference you would like to save, like could be a dark light theme toggle. It could be something like you want to automatically sync data or so. Any specific value the user might want to persistently save in the app, which actually only exists once. So if you have a list of data, let's say you have a, a note taking app or so, and the user can of course create multiple nodes, then using data store is not the right choice here, since for these types of data storage, you need a real structural data store, so a database in the end. But if there is a certain persistent setting that only exists once in the app that you want to persistently save, then data store is a good choice. Um, so typical use cases here are for um, saving session tokens, for saving maybe the ID of the local user to do some API calls with that. Um, just normal settings, of course, if the user can change some preferences in a, in a setting screen on the app or so, then data store is a brilliant choice. And in order to now save something here in data store, we first of all need access to a coroutine scope since data store is completely coroutine based. So we can say vault scope is remember coroutine scope and then use that to launch a new coroutine here. As usual, I would recommend some um, layered architectural approach here, uh, putting data store in the data layer. But in these tutorials, I really want to keep that focused on the technology itself without um, overcomplicating any architectural practices. So we can then say prefs.edit in order to edit our preferences. And here we get access, if we read it, to these mutable preferences. So mutable preferences, in the end, preferences we can change. And if we want to change a specific preference, then data store works with so-called keys, which we need to access here just like a normal hash map or so. Or we say, okay, we want to update this specific preference to this specific value. And in order to get a reference to this key, we want to create Let's say we want the counter key, which is in the end an integer value, we can say is equal to int preferences key with a specific name. Let's call this counter. And then we can say it, so our data store reference, we can also give this a name, data store at the key of counter key is equal to our counter state plus one. So this state we don't have yet right now, but we would just increment this by one and save the result back in data store. And the moment our added block here was executed, 
data store will persistently write that to our file. But depending on what kind of preference you want to save, you might not want to have an int preference key, but rather a string preferences key, for example, or string set preferences key, or what else, maybe a Boolean preferences key. So for all these typical primitive data types, you have such a key. You can get reference to that with these functions, specifying the name of the key, and then updating the value to something else with this mutable data store reference. And the cool thing about data store is that it's completely based on coroutines and flows, as I said. That means we can also use it to automatically observe a specific preference. And that works by us going up here, having a counter state, and we get that by saying by data store, or by, by prefs actually, dot data so this is a flow of type preferences which will um, trigger or which will emit something whenever our preferences actually change so refer to the data and then we can map this flow so the result of each flow since we are not looking for the whole preferences object but rather just this counter key so we can map all the emissions from this flow to it so again our preferences add the key of well again our counter key we can copy and paste this from down below, refer to the counter key, and if that doesn't exist, we map it to zero, so that will be our default value. Now that we've mapped these emissions, we can call collect as state, so we take the flow, we convert it to a compose state, so our compose UI is always notified about changes in this counter value. We need to specify an initial value here, which is just zero. And then if we take a look here at this counter, that's really nothing else than just integer compose state that will change whenever our preferences change. So the moment we call prefs.edit here, change the value of our counter state, our compose state will also automatically update. Now we can take this counter state, assign this here to our text composable, and that should be it. Let's launch that here on Android, first of all, and then we'll also take a look at desktop and iOS, of course. There we go, our app is launched, starts with zero. And if we now hit increment, then our button is incremented. And this would have actually only worked if the value was already properly saved in data store, which this indicates it was, since we only display the value by first of all, reading it from data store here. So if we increment this a few times, then close our app here, relaunch it, we should still see the old value here, which we do. So the value is now persistently safe. Let's of course also try this on iOS. Let's select iOS up here, launch this. And there we go, the iOS simulator is booted up. Let's wait for the app to be fully installed. And there we go, it's launching. It shows exactly the same UI as on Android. And if we hit increment, we can increment this text. Let's also close this here, reopen this and we see the value properly showing up in our UI. Let's lastly try this on a desktop. Let's minimize all this, go to desktop main, main KT, launch this here with a run KT, um, or run main KT. We'll spit out the error as usual in these videos. Maybe at some point there will be a fix, I think so. Um, but we can already work around that by opening this terminal and calling gradlew.run. And this will launch and build our desktop program which is right over here. We can hit increment, increment this. And if we then close this, reopen it, um, again with a great little W run, we should still be able to see, yes, here is the text that says 11. And you should also be able to see the file um, for the desktop environment right here, because that is the path of the executable prefs that preferences PB. So you can see that is the default file path where we save the preferences file at. Awesome. Now you understood how to work with preferences in Kotlin multi-platform. As I said, today's the last chance for 25% discount on all my courses, including the KMP one. Check it down below. And other than that, thanks so much for watching. See you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.